All right, so let's talk about the other issue that comes up a lot, and you you hit on it a little bit earlier, but um, I'm not sure if I really completely understand this right because a lot of guys call it micro foam or micro bubbles, and then I've heard other guys call it uh, like macro bubbles or something that gets trapped in the film. What what is the correct terminology like when you spray something out and you have you know you see all these bubbles and sometimes they flow out and some they don't. What what is the correct term for that? Generally speaking, macro foam will be any foam that you can visually see on the surface of your material. And okay. micro foam is material that is foam that's trapped inside the liquid film. Okay. Um, micro foam and macro foam are dealt with in two separate but similar ways. Uh, ma- micro foam is actually an issue, you know, even on the production side. When we're making the material, we're not, we're trying not to incorporate foam into the liquid you know, as we can, because it's going under high speed mixers, it's right, it, but you know, unfortunately, it's got all these nice flow additives in it, but these flow additives are, will stabilize foam. Uh, so you know, you end up you end up fighting them with deformers. Uh, and so there's there's chemical deformers that we use that go in and are intended to break these bubbles apart. Certainly for macro foam, these are the you know these work very well. Uh, for micro foam and water based, it, it you know it, the, it does a bit of a trick finding. Uh, you know, the right deformer. The other side of it then becomes all of this can be impacted by application as well. You know, if you've got uh, material that's, that doesn't have enough atomizing there, it won't have the high, the, the pressure either through the, the tip uh, on an air assist uh, or it may not have enough air pressure behind it to fully break apart that paint in the spray fan to get those bubbles, to get those paint droplets excuse me small enough that when they apply they apply evenly and they aren't like a gob of paint that's actually got a a, a drop of air in it already that you're just basically putting air in into your 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 layer of fin in a short i mean i guess that's that's mac macro foam and micro foam i mean but it's it's a you know it's a huge part of of water-based products uh, just because the water tends to stabilize foam so easily because it's high surface yeah, and we talked we talked um, earlier with uh, Stefan about you know the the biggest it seems like the biggest um, issue is air assist, um, which uh, tends to be um, cause the most problems. Would you you kind of agree with that? I I think just the nature of how yeah an air assist pump works, it it certainly makes it more difficult. Uh, but everybody's using it, so you have to have a solution <laughs> for that. Yeah. Uh, well, and I mean, I'll be honest with you. Some companies don't. Um, I, I've, I've, I know some that's like, you just can't shoot their product out of uh, air assist. It just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Well, then they're not going to be able to sell to any large customers. I mean, because that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not an option for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I hear you, man. I, I'm, you know, I just, you know, I, I I'm very, I'm very curious and very, um, one of the things that I've talked with, uh, Stefan about is like, I have, um, I'm working with another company and when I got their product, they suggested, um, airless, um, because of the, the bubble issue. And I, and I did some testing with their products and we took the air assisted airless and I shot it, um, had bubbles on the surface, but they obviously, they flowed out really nice. And then when I shot it with airless, there was like none on the surface. So it sounds like from what you're saying is, is that some of this could be, um, uh, depending on the product, I mean, obviously it can be lots of factors. It could be, you know, the defoamers. I'm just kind of, what I'm really trying to highlight is just bring to light that this is a complicated matter and that there's a lot of things to consider. But I'm also trying to figure out a way to help end users um, deal with it as well. You know, if, if this if this doesn't work with this equipment, you know, try this. This might This might work better and so that people aren't spending, you know, thousands of dollars you know, trying to figure out what works for the particular coating that they want to use. Sure. Well, then let's spin it back a little bit and, okay. and, and say uh, one reason why people are going to make low viscosity coatings is, uh, you know, if, if, the coat, if the material isn't thick, that bubble then, whether it's small or large, it will, will have pressure behind it and it'll allow it to release through the film up to the surface. And then when it gets to the surface, it'll break and smooth out. So a lower viscosity material is going to have a lower tendency to trap air. Uh, the you know you, you you get some of the drawbacks where you aren't able to apply as thick a film or you aren't able to apply as well on the sag. But certainly if a, if a material is thin, 
that that air bubble is going to be able to push through to the surface or combine with other smaller air bubbles to make a big bubble that can then break more easily. Um, that's one, you know, aspect of having a low viscosity coating and one way to reduce air. Uh, another way, obviously, is increasing your atomizing air. It sounds a little odd because you're putting more air into it, but what you're actually doing is you're breaking those droplets of paint up into smaller uh, smaller particles, and, 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 and those small particles of paint droplets don't contain the trapped air like a large, you know, if you, if you poured it on. And it might have, and it might have that air in it as well. Um, and to go even further than that, you know, moving to uh, smaller tip size will create more hydraulic pressure, uh, and that hydraulic atomizing pressure will do the same, a similar. It's a different physics behind it, but it's a similar function. Is is it's forcing the fluid through at a higher pressure, atomizing it better, and you end up having a a, a spray finish that has less air in it initially. Yeah. Um, also, don't shake water-based paints on a shaker. <laughs> yeah, 